Hey guys, in our last video, uh, we converted the, the uh, high-res version of our character to the uh, low-poly version. And one of the things that um, we went over in that video, if you watch it, is that um, the Z remesher didn't do as good of a job um, on this specific piece here as I um, want. In comparison to all the other pieces, this feels like it still could be reduced um, quite a bit. And if I uh, do the BPR, you can see the wireframe on all the pieces and they're all uh, kind of seem much lower than this uh, dense one, right? So one of the things that I said in the video is that you can always use uh, quad draw to create low poly uh, wireframe. So this is a more of a complex uh, piece and I thought it would be a fun little uh, exercise to take this, export it out, um, to Maya and just maybe taking a look and see what is the process of using quad draw in uh, Maya to turn this into something a lot uh, lower res, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this out from uh, ZBrush and I'll just call it, um, I'll just call this arm, that's fine. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to jump into Maya. All right, and in Maya, let's go ahead and just import this piece. All right, when I uh, import it into the scene, you can see that it's very, very small. Uh, one of the really important things that we uh, must keep in mind is um, we don't wanna change the position or the scale of this because when we export this out, once the model um, is done, right? Um, we don't want to change the scale or the position in ZBrush. So that's super important, right? So if you are uh, jumping between ZBrush and Maya, uh, one of the things you don't want to do when you bring ZBrush stuff is change the location and the scale of your mesh. Now, you could, of course, uh, do something like this, right? I can select it. I can reset my, uh, let's go ahead and reset my pivot. And I could go to the channel box and you can see that the scale is currently set to one, right? I could do it this way. So for example, let's say I want it 20 times larger, right? I could say, let's go ahead and do that and then press F. But um, one of the important steps before I export this out, obviously, is going to be setting this back to one, right? So uh, I don't want to uh, freeze my transformation. I want to make sure that I retain my scale uh, values. And then when I finish, let's say I finish using quad draw in uh, Maya, because maybe this is, you know, maybe it makes more sense to be larger because it kind of works better with these units and the measurements. But then, of course, then I need to come back here, press one, and make sure that I export it out this way, right? To make sure that it matches. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, so for this exercise, let's go ahead and just multiply it by 25 times. And let's take a look, what would be the process of converting this into a lower uh, mesh, right? So to use quad draw, uh, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is you select your mesh and you turn on this button right here. So it's like a little um, magnet icon and it says make the selected object slide. So as soon as I click on it, you can see it turn green. In the outliner, you can see that the mesh is also green, right? And now what I could do is I can manually come uh, here to my poly modeling tab, grab this um, tool right here called quad draw, and I can start laying down uh, manual topology for this piece. So let's say I want my grid to be something much, much larger than it was um, in ZBrush, right? Maybe I want something like that. And I can just very carefully hand design the shape of this, carefully deciding um, what type of resolution I want, right? Now, the cool thing about Quadro is that um, if you go into your uh, modeling toolkit, and this is the icon for it. If you don't have it uh, parked on uh, anywhere, you can just uh, click on that and this will open up. But if you, uh, you see quad draws being selected, right? In the mesh um, section. Um, if you open up your keyboard and mouse shortcuts, it has the cheat sheet for all of the shortcuts that you could use with this. So that's uh, very helpful and very important. You can see there's a, um, a long list of them. And, but the, the very basic, I don't want to get too uh, advanced into this, but the very basic ones are, for example, um, you can just click a couple dots right next to uh, the shape and then you need four points to create a uh, polygon. So you just hold on the shift key, 
hover over the uh, four points and then click to create the uh, polygon. You can also grab these points and move them around. Um, you can hold the tab key and extrude. So that's another way of going around and quickly generating your um, wireframe, right? You can do that. So I can also insert a loop by holding down uh, control. And you can see if I click, for example, here, I can very quickly add a another uh, loop, right? I could do that. I can also hold down control and shift and I can delete certain polygons if I wanted to do that. Um, that's an option as well. Another thing I can do is hold down the tab key and then middle uh, click, middle mouse click, and that will expand the entire uh, loop or entire edge, right? Edge loop. And uh, obviously that wasn't a good spot to do that in. So let me sh try to do one down here. Let's say I don't want to manually go through and create these here. I could just hold down the tab key and middle mouse button and drag it down, right? And you can see that's uh, quickly uh, create topology. Uh, another thing I can do is let's create a couple more uh, going this way. And let's say I want to make sure that some of this uh, surface uh, here is kind of nicely hugging the surface of the uh, reference mesh. And instead of manually kind of aligning these points, uh, what I could do is I can hold down the shift key and smooth it out this way. And you can see that the topology is kind of uh, going to do its best to rearrange itself to hug the surface underneath, right? So essentially you can do a super messy job uh, kind of covering all of this and then uh, holding down the shift key and just kind of realigning um, your topology. So it's a very powerful tool. And as you can see, it's very precise and it's gonna give you incredibly clean topology. And this is what is required um, to take your uh, meshes to the kind of a triple A quality, right? Because you're in control of every single po point. There's no ran randomness of any kind, right? You're uh, literally in control of the flow, you know um, what makes sense, what doesn't, and you can maintain your quads and all of that stuff, right? I can, for example, come here and start creating this uh, drop here. And you can see the difference in topology, right? Um, look at this here versus this. So it's a much, much better quality, right? This is terrible here. But that's not the point. The point is I just wanna show you uh, the process and how Quadraw uh, works. And it's very awesome. So for example, for these here, let's say I wanna do something much, much cleaner. I can go around and maybe do something like this. All right, then I can start creating uh, this topology here by just dragging this part. And one of the tricks you can do uh, also is that you can do every other one, for example. So do something like this. I'm just clicking and then holding down the tab key. I can just drag out the, um, the extrusion, right? So I could do something like that. And now the uh, cool thing about this is that because now there's spaces in between, you can just come uh, and holding down the shift key, create the topology. Um, between between the other polygons, right? So it's a very uh, interesting, quick little trick. And the uh, point of this is uh, you can see clearly there's a big difference between something like this and something like this, right? So let me, let's go ahead and finish this off. All right, so you can clearly see uh, a huge difference between this topology here and, you know, and you have this kind of stuff with zero mesh or sometimes, right? You have like weird little things and then something like this, right? So clearly uh, this is a uh, better option, right? And then obviously you wanna make sure that, uh, let's say I wanna continue and meet this this uh, topology here, right? I just, it's kind of fun actually. It's it's sor sort of in some strange way, almost meditative. You can just uh, kind of get lost and just listen to, you know, a, a good track and just uh, very 
quickly kind of go around the mesh and create your own custom topology. And of course, uh, making it pretty is important, right? So if you are doing it manually, then you might as well take the time to make it a little more appealing, right? So that didn't look like very nice. All right, so I'm not gonna do the entire thing. I just simply wanted to show you uh, another uh, option, right? In, in, or in, not really an option, in addition to ZRemesher. Some some pieces you could jump into Maya, do a quick uh, quad draw uh, trace, and then bring it back into um, ZBrush and then continue doing ZRemeshing. So I think it's a really powerful workflow to mix the two. All right, so thank you uh, so much for watching this video and I'll see you next one.